In this video, I'm going to show you how to turn this into this. Hello, I'm Will with Will's Custom Airbrushing, and this is my first video. I should have done the, one of these a long time ago. I get a lot of requests to do them, so here's my first attempt, and we'll see how it goes. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to create, or how I create, a custom airbrush tumbler. And we're going to break it down from the very first step into creating the stencil work all the way down to the clear coat. So bear with me, and this is all new to me and all new to you, so let's get started. All right, so the very first step is creating your stencil work. I like to use the um, Silhouette Cameo 3, and this is the computer program it uses to add your images on there and cut them out onto the vinyl. I use a heat resistant vinyl because I do a lot of Cerakoting as well, but with this cup we're going to be doing all automotive paints. Um, the, so the vinyl I use is a heat resistant by Avery. Um, I love this vinyl. It, it sticks with um, in between coats if I'm having to bake something. Um, it doesn't it doesn't crinkle up or anything like that and when you remove it it keeps a lot of the adhesive to itself so it won't leave any adhesive when you pull them off so the very first step is how what designs we're going to use um, for this cup I'm going to paint myself a cup because I haven't done so yet so what we do is we go to the file and we're going to merge and for this one I'm going to go ahead and paint my uh, my business logo on the cup. So a lot of these already have pre-designed. Um, you can get um, the I have like four memory, um, like two terabyte memory external hard drives that I save all my stuff to, and I do it. Uh, I save every image on every, um, all four of them. That way, if something happens to one of the drivers, I'll still have my um, designs on another one. So here's my my business logo, Wheels Customer Brushing. Um, now with this, the cups, you're limited to width and length. Um, so for this design, I usually get away with the four and a half inches wide and on these on these cuffs you have this bevel right here so and this is from here to here to this bevel is, is four inches and it's not it's nice and smooth but when you get to this bevel you start to put your stencils in it starts to um, warp the the stencil as it goes down to the end so I'll show you how to do all that when we when we get to that point but for right now um, I'm going to go with my design on one side and then I'm going to add one of these little Punisher skulls that I fooled with and designed a little design with so this one I'm going to add to the bottom and that bottom is about three and a half inches so for the height I'm going to go or Let's see, we'll go three and a half, and then maybe a two and a half. That looks pretty proportionate, so we'll go with that one. Um, I want to duplicate this. And you'll see why. I'll use several different um, options when I'm doing this, because it... It's a lot easier than it looks, but once we get, I'm able to show you how to um, add your different stencils for your layers, and the backgrounds, and everything else. So I guess from the other side, I'm going to go with um, maybe this Predator. And he's pretty big, so I'm going to bring him into the middle. I'm going to change the options over here. Here's your width. So I'm going to go 4.5 for the other side. And I'm going to make them almost the entire length. So I'm going to go 7 inches tall. I'll bring this one up. Alright. Um, 
Let me bring him this way. So in the middle of the cups, I like to add a border that breaks up each side. So I already have some pre-designs done for borders to go ahead and split the cup. Um, it just gives it more detail and more to look at. So these are 10 by 2. I'm going to leave it 2 inches thick, but I'm going to break this down to 9 inches. And then what you're going to do here, I may not have room for all this, but I'm going to copy this one, be a duplicate, and then I'm going to horizontal flip it, or vertically flip it, so it's all together, and it looks like I'm not going to have enough room for that one, but I already have some pre-cut, so I'm going to cut these out, and we're just going to go with these designs. So once you get your designs you want lo um, for the cup, you'll come over here to the trace option. You're going to select the area, like so. You're going to outline, then trace. And everything in red is what's going to be cut into the vinyl. So once everything's done there, I'll come over here to send. I already have my vinyl um, loaded into the, the cutter. Alright, the second step is getting your cup prepped to go um, get ready to sandblast. This is how I do it. Um, I take my tumbler, nice and shiny, and I go ahead and add this 2 mil vinyl masking used for, um, for powder coating. Again, I, sometimes I do start coat these cups. So, the reason I add this cup in, the tape into here, it protects the outer edge on the inside. So when I'm sandblasting, it doesn't get inside here. Um, I have a plug that goes in there, and I'll show you that here shortly. Um, so it just protects all the interior and the edge right here. So when I'm painting everything, I'll have a nice clean edge to go all the way around. Um, for my base coat, I use the Wicked Colors Detail Black. This is a water base. Um, I just mix it up here. I'm not going to need that much because it covers real nice. Um, but this is my base layer. Um, all my automotive colors, or all automotive paints, these are uh, urethane paints. The reason why I like to use automotive paints is because think of your vehicle. Your, your car has a clear coat on there that's protected really well. So the same concept here. Um, once we paint everything on here, We'll have uh, a nice coat on there, clear coat, and it's protected, so it's dishwasher safe. Um, all the cups I've done in the past, uh, I have several here that are over two years old, and, and they still look brand new. Um, so next step, I'm going to coat all this. I'm going to get my sandblasting done, and we'll go from there. All right. Um, next step is uh, sandblasting. You don't have to use sandblaster, you can use scotch bark pad, you know, anything to rough up the edges. Um, I use the uh, sandblaster because it's nice and clean, there's no real deep gouge marks or anything. Um, this is the plug I add inside the cups. Um, I just push it in there until it reaches the bottom and everything else is protected inside. You can get these, um, these little plugs at Cerakote.com. Again, I, I stir up a lot of things also. So from this step, we're going to throw it in the sand booth and blast it away. Alright, I got the cup all sand blasted. It has a nice clean finish on there. Uh, took all the sheen away. reason why you got to sand blast or stuff these uh, cups up is to rough up that smooth finish on there so the paint has something to adhere to. So I still got my plug in. I'm going to pop this out. I won't need this anymore. Um, this is a little stand I built. You know, it works fine for me. I can move it around. But so now what we have to do is clean off all the residue. I use acetone. Um, it cleans off all the oils and everything from my hands. I just put it down and wipe it off.
when spraying your base coat, you don't want to spray it on thick. You want to, you're going to want to spray it on real light. And I usually do three coats. Um, three coats I found has been just enough for a nice base layer. My cups, I have my little self-made oven. Uh, I rate it up to about 145 degrees. Um, this will quicken the dry process to, to the next uh, coat. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get my first coat on there. Let it dry out and we'll move to step two. Out of the oven has a nice shine to it, nice and covered everywhere. All right, from this step here, what we're going to do is I use a red scotch white pad and we're going to scuff this stuff all the way around. To get this scuffed up again, just just like the sandblasting part, um, I roughed up the edges to give my next coat something to adhere to. Um, I'm going to add this black diamond metallic on top of this. Um, everything's going to be metallic on there, so when I go to lay my stencil work, when I pull them off, it's going to show this nice, pretty black metallic. Alright, got my black metallic added on, you see it has a nice shine to it. Um, from here, I'll just wipe it off a little bit to get some of this excess metallic flake off. Um, And then we'll start adding stencils. Already did, already weeded these out. Um, they're going to go on on each side. Uh, some of these cups have logos on them. 
that's raised on the cup. I like to add those on the sides. So, so when I add these stencils on, I have a nice flat finish. Uh, for the sides, this is the designs I use to break up each side. Um, I'm kind of set on my logo side. I'm probably going to add um, this nice, it's called Carnet Green Pearl from Custom Shop. All these paints I get from uh, TCD Global. Um, I'll throw the link in the description and you just go to Automotive Paints. Uh, airbrush paints and these are ready to spray. They already have um, the reducer and everything in there. You can reduce this down further, but I've had pretty good luck with what, the, what comes in the bottle. Um, these do have a marble inside. You can see the paint gets stuck in the bottom. You want to shake these up real good. Sometimes these hard to reach areas I'll take my little mixer and I'll stick in there and I'll get to the bottom. Just about got it. All right. So from here, um, I'm going to lay down my stencil work. I'm going to start on my logo side. So I'm going to peel my stencil off. And I'm going to stick it in place, making sure I'm in the right spot. And just lay it on. Nice and flat. It's a little squeegee. And then we'll peel off. Real slow. What you want to do is you want to pull this off evenly. So I'll come all the way to the edge and I'm going to pull down. I'm pushing against the cup so these raised areas doesn't peel back with the transfer paper. Just like so. I'll push down, make sure everything is nice and flat. There's no bubbles, there's no raised edges. You want the stencil flat as possible when, so when you go to spray, paint doesn't get underneath the stencil. All right? I'm going to put this little skull on the bottom since I have all this empty room here. lined up as straight as possible. It looks about right. I'm gonna push everything down everything down with my thumb. And we'll peel off straight down. Now, a little trouble area is this ring underneath where it's sealed in. The uh, stencil is not going all the way down into the metal there. So, if I was to leave it like it is, when I go to spray this, paint's going to get behind that stencil. So what you'll do is you'll take your little squeegee and go right down that little seam right there, push the stencil in. And now the stencil's far in there, so you won't have overspray or underspray in there. So it's nice and flat. All right.
Now, I could go ahead and lap and add the bigger stencil to the back, but I'm going to break this cuff up. So I'm going to come to the side and I'm going to lay down my border. I think I want the border to break away this way. So what I'll do is I want this area to be green. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out and I'm going to spray my green to where it fades away this way on each side. It gives me plenty of room to lay this down. So when I lay this down, Everything under the stencil will be green. And when I go to the back, I'm thinking about doing a blue pearl, intense pearl, and doing some cryptic patterns behind there. And I'll ghost these in and I'll show you how to do that. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and add my green and I'll come back and show you the results. All right. Now that I have the, the green laid down, I came past a little bit on each side, and this is where I'm going to add my border. Quick tip, be sure you wear latex gloves on these. You don't want the oils from your fingers getting on the cup. Um, because if that does happen, this paint won't adhere to, this, to the surface right because of the oils. So always wear gloves of some type. Alright. So now I'm going to add my stencil. I want the, the border to go away from there. So I'll peel this off. And some of these areas, some of the uh, paper came off on there. You just take a little razor blade and, and push them off. If you don't, the vinyl won't stick to the cup. top. Actually, I'm going to flip it over this way. Yeah, I, I like this part of the stencil. Just come on down. Some of those areas will still come through. Press it on down. Alright. And these areas up top, you just take a razor blade. Cut it even across. On the bottom, I've got my logo down there. So I'm just going to cover this up all the way around. I'm going to go ahead and cut this part. Alright. Some things on there, we'll start peeling away. Again, you want to go level all the way down. 
in these areas. I'm going to go slow with. More problem areas. Let's do those off. So avoid things like this when you're cutting uh, your stencils out. Uh, the blade cut a little too deep, which allowed this layer to stick onto the decal or the stencil. So we just need to, instead of a 7 and an 8 on the thickness, I'd probably go back to like a 7 and a 7. Alright. Get my stencil on. Press everything down. Make sure everything is placed in well. And I'm going to cover this side up with tape because I'm, I'm going to come back to this side and add textures, um, some grunge stencil to add depth and some and some uh, texture to it. So I just take my regular masking tape from Home Depot, just a painter's tape. I'll come down. bottom. Add my tape in. What I'm going to do is bring my razor 
blade all the way around the edge. Uh, here, I'm really not worried about the edge because I'm going to add some uh, texture to it. So, on these overspray areas, I'm going to go back with my, my black diamond and spray this over so it's all black again. And then I'm going to add my other stencil on there. So, I'm going to go spray this and I'll be right back. All right. I got the black spray back over. Um, everything's covered on the inside. So now I'm going to add the predator decal for the stencil. Now, this one's where it's going to get a little tricky. Because we're going to have to deal with this bevel area right here. You'll see. A lot of people do their cups, they'll just do a design up here or design below the bevel. But I, I'm not scared to do everything. It just distorts the uh, decal a little bit or the stencil a little bit on the areas, but it's nothing we can't straighten out. So I'm going to get my cup straight. Everything's flat up top, but it's still raised down here. And I'll show you how to deal with that. So, from here, I'm going to go right down the middle. Because I want the face to be as perfect as possible. So, I'll just push everything around. Get them straight. top and pull this down evenly. So when I come to the, the bevel down here, everything's going to start being raised. So I'm going to go real slow and push everything down on my way.
Alright. Now, as you can see, everything is is crooked, but it's nothing we can't fix. So what you'll do is make sure everything from the bevel up is flat and we'll push down from there. So this little area right here, I'm gonna raise it up with my blade. And I'm gonna cut close up here. And I'm gonna flatten this out with my finger and bring it back. like so. Take your time, get everything straight the way you want it. Again, you want to keep everything flat so you don't get no underspray over there. pretty good there. Everything's nice and flat again. Um, now from this point, he's on there. I'm going to add some detail bright white. I'm going to bring him up, bring him out. Um, I'm going to highlight everything and I'm going to add some texture to it with my little grunge stencils. So from here, we can finally get to paint.
take my detail white, and I'm just going to highlight them. I'm just going to bring them out of the background. Now I'm going to take my grunge and I'm just going to start spraying over top of it. Creating, this is where we're going to start adding our layers, adding texture. And when you do this layer upon layer, you'll start to see the depth it creates. the whole stencil. I mean, if you use the same area, you'll get the same look and it just doesn't look right. Just like so. Alright, since I'm going to go with the blue around everything, um, I'll probably do some candy over top of this. So what I'm going to do is I bring my stencil, different types, and spray around. create a dark blue. And what the candy is, is a trans it's a transparent paint. So everything I sprayed in white you're going to be able to see again, but it's going to be blue.
like using my heat gun. What this does, it just dries the layer I just put in there a little quicker. Alright. Now from here I want to I want to seal this blue in. So what you'll use next is a mid coat clear. And what the mid coat clear does it just locks this layer down. So with whatever color I go on top of this, the new color won't blend into the blue or the blue won't blend into the other the other color, it just stays put. Now that I got my new coat clear on, I'm going to start adding some Cryptek on there. This is one of the coolest patterns um, ever. And you can do so much with this. I'm, I'm just doing, there's nothing simple, I'm just getting rid of the, the sharp edges on here. Just like other stencils, you just want to go right down.
sure you push everything down because now we're starting to overlap on on top of the uh, predator. So we want to push this down so the stencil is on there and won't cause underspray. I'll probably put a little piece down here and one on the other side. Even though the Cryptek is an amazing design, it is tough when you're trying to add all these pencils to it. One more and I should do it. Go. Alright. Put that area down. Now, what I'm going to do is spray some white over this. Very light. I got the first coat on there. Um, I'm going to add some green to this. So I'm going to use my mean green. No, nope, that's fine. Here's mean green. And I'm going to spray over top of this. You can't see 
This ring, I'm just gonna mist it on. All right, I got all the pattern taken off, and you can see the pattern is still there. Um, some of my bo my grunge border came off when I was peeling the could take off, but that's no big deal because the next layer I'm going to put on there won't affect that. Um, what I'm going to do next is add this cool little pattern to it, and I'm going to ghost it in by using. This uh, aqua blue diamond crystal. And it's, I'm just going to put this on there, spray it over there, and it's going to give it a nice um, flake in there. So I'm going to add this on. Just like I did the cryptic, I'm just going to cut it around. Um, no, it's just random patterns, and I'm not really doing a whole lot. Um, I want to focus some of the smaller areas with the, with the bigger areas.
this is really going to leave a cool effect on here. And you really won't be able to see this until you get it out in the sunlight. The sunlight really brings this pattern out, the uh, aqua blue. A lot of the cups I do, I'll, I'll put in, I'll ghost in hidden um, patterns like honeycomb and cryptic. I'll even, when I do Harley cups, I'll uh, put in Harley logos, just ghost them in there where you can barely see them. Some of this stuff is pretty. Just like flat. I'll do this last one and I'll be it for this. All right, now I've got my aqua blue diamond in here. So all I'm gonna do is come around, spray it on top. Thank 
done. We'll dry that off. Alright. So now I'm going to peel off everything on this side. So including the Predator and all these little designs right here. Alright. Now I get everything pulled off. You can see, you can see how the pattern comes into effect. I mean, there's layers upon layers. You can see the depth in there. Everything we laid down at first is still there. All the patterns. Now for this side, I'm going to add uh, some grunge, maybe some black. Um, I don't know if it's not like that. Um, I'm definitely going to work on this area right here first. So, I created a stencil earlier. Um, and what it does is it protects the outside layer and just shows up everything inside. Because I'm going to do a lot of stuff on the interior of this. Pull this off. Right. Now I just gotta try to match it back up. So I'll probably start with the eyes. Try to get those eyes in there. Peel this off. Again, just flat like the like the rest of them. Tape off this whole area. Inside. I don't want no overspray anywhere. I might try, let's see, hmm. this is the cool thing about these cups, you can just do your own thing, um, sometimes it's hard to choose a color, but I think I'll go with 
a lighter blue. So what I'm going to use is my Hawaiian blue, which is a little bit lighter. I'm going to turn all that blue. Start peeling off my, my black or the, the decal or the stencil, you can see how it pops out like that. So, what I'll probably do is add a little bit of black here and there on my grunge just to uh, make this more interesting other than just the green. I'll go with the triple D, D black. And just do some textures here and there. Actually, I think I'm going to use a different type of pattern. I'm going to use my honeycomb stencil just to spray it, mist it in there. spraying here and there, not really dark, just enough to create a pattern on them. That'll be good. Because when I pull this off, everything's going to be black, so I don't want to go too dark. So I'm going to pull this all off, and we'll see what the final result looks like. All right, as you can see, all the stencil is taken off. Um, I got my patterns. I got pretty much where I want it to look like. Um, the next step is uh, clear coat. And once that's done, and we're finished. So from here, we'll go mix up some clear, spray it, and throw it in the booth. All right. Now I'm going to mix up my clear. Um, I get this at Sherwin Williams. Automotive store, 
um, Automotive Clear SC720 and some slow hardener. I mixed these in and I had I had good results with these. It's, it's a good solid clear for vehicles. Um, what I'll do, I use a milliliter scanner. It's like a four to one ratio, but I usually joke about six milliliters. Mix them up. Now I'm going to stick in my gun. I use three strainers when I do my clear. Yeah, that way I don't get any trash in there. Alright. I've got two cups. The one I just did today and one I did yesterday. And I'm going to clear both of them. Stick them out in the oven to bake. I'm going to do probably three coats. So the first coat is just going to be like the base. I'm going to do a real light coat just to cover everything and stick it in the booth. Let this cure for about 15 minutes and we'll break back and do the second coat. Alright, time for coat two.
rice will be in there for about five hours. Um, when it's cured, I'll take them out, do a quick little recap video, and that'll be it. All right, here's the end result. You got the clear coats all done. Um, you got the inner tape all removed, the lid on. As you can see, the end results, they look amazing to me. Um, steps taken into this cup, you know, it, it's just the way I do it. It's not, I mean, I'm sure there's other ways to do it, but I've got good results out of, out of, this, out, out of all these steps. So I hope you enjoyed it. Um, please subscribe. And I'll be posting more videos, the more cups I do. I'll, I'll post every one I do. So hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.